Okay, welcome guys. Today I'm going to do a review on the Triple Ot Design Sear Pouch. And you might be looking at this bag and saying that no, that's not that's Maxpedition. Uh, you're right. This is a Maxpedition Jumbo Verse Pack EDC. It's my everyday carry bag, but it might be kind of hard to see because that's the way I want it to be. Um, right here. There's this pouch, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So, real quick, there's just ITW G hook that you unlatch. You take this elastic off. And you have a little tool drill. So, I'm not going to show you too much of what's inside it just yet. But you just, when you're done, you take this elastic loop, throw it back around, and re-hook it. Why I like this system is this is a escape and evasion seer type kit. So, uh, say you're on the run or something like that, and you have your bag, but you got to run faster, you're going to drop this. You can unhook the buckle like I just did, just and rip it off. As you can see, it comes off really quick, and it it goes on a single column of molly right here. So let's get over to the table and take some close up peeks at this. Okay, here it is. This is the Triple Ot Design Sear Pouch, or also known as the SP1 Pouch. <clears throat> it's made out of a 500 denier nylon, it has an ITW G hook. Its folded dimensions are 2 and 3 quarters inches by 4 inches. And when it's fully open, it is seven and a quarter inches by eight inches. Uh, before I open it up, just a quick kind of 360, some detailed close-ups. Um, one of the biggest things I like about it is made in the USA, not designed in the USA. Um, it's made in the US. Um, and then you can see genuine Cordura brand fabric. Um, so it's that. It's the legitimate Cordura. A lot of companies use knockoff um, Cordura, which it's not as durable. So, you know, what's the background behind this pouch? You know, what's it designed for? Well, um, the type, the name of the pouch is SEER, S-E-R-E. -E. It's an acronym for Survival, Escape, Resistance, and Evasion. Okay, so pretty much an E&E &E kit. Um, you want things to evade and escape. Um, so things to cut zip ties, cut duct tape, cut rope, cut cordage in case you're tied up, uh, things to open locks or disable locks or bypass locks, um, pretty much things to help you escape in essence. On the flip side you got you have to remain kind of discreet and portable because this is something that you want to be small enough that they hopefully won't find. Um, so I've seen a lot of these E&E &E kits, you know, there's these big pouches and tins and whatnot, and yeah, chances are maybe you're carrying it in a cargo pocket, but if I was to frisk you or search you, um, I would feel that and I would, I would pull it out, and there goes all your um, equipment or tools. So in the Black Scout Survival, which I'll link his video um, below or up above, um, he talks about how this is great to organize all your stuff but he talks about opening this up and before getting captured or whatever he calls it layering which pretty much means uh, you know maybe taking this thing out and maybe hanging it on your belt uh, buckle so it's kinda like by your zipper fly um, you know maybe putting a hacksaw blade into your sock or into your waistband um, putting some bypass um, shims again maybe into your shoe or um, underneath your laces or just places where your captor wouldn't really think to look. Let's go through what I have in here and then some variations that you can do. So this is a UST um, it's pretty much a saw and a razor blade uh, these things are cheap and expensive. I think I got this one at Walmart or just some big box store. This is pretty much like a saber saw or a jigsaw blade, a metal cutting blade. It's probably 18 to 24 TPI. 
Next, um, these are called bump keys, and if you don't know what they are, I'm, I won't talk about it, but just go look at some, uh, some YouTube videos or whatever. Um, these can be an excellent way to get into, get in or get out, you know, of locks, restraints, padlocks, whatever. Um, they do require practice, just like lock picking, and, you know, some people can pick locks quicker, and some people, you know, I can actually use these quite proficiently. Um, this pretty much fits the majority of master padlocks, which are super common, um, and then you have a slage and a quick set. Uh, key. So these are pretty much the three most common keys that you'll find in the U.S. This is just a like probably a three to three and a half inch chunk of hacksaw blade. Um, again, it's kind of redundancy because I already have. But the thing is, maybe you throw this to different areas of your body, and they find this, and they because they find this, they don't um, look for this. Just a thought. So. This, you can also tie a piece of cordage. I haven't yet, but you could tie a piece of cordage and, or you could slip this in your sock or, you know, in your shoe, under your laces, in your belt band, um, in certain cases, inside of a belt, um, in your boxers, whatever, you know, whatever. Um, but it's really, it's thin. It's just a standard hacksaw blade. Um, beneath that is... A very very well, not super small it's a double-sided razor blade um, still in the packaging I'll I'll pull another one out in a second but I want to keep this one in there this right here this may surprise you underneath is an SE survival card or whatever it comes with all their knives and accessories um, and all I did is I heated up a um, an a punch all um, but you could use a pen or a pin or sewing needle or whatever and I just heated it up with a lighter and a I poked a hole in each um, corner of this card and I wrapped it and this may surprise you but on this card is 25 feet of Kevlar 200 pound breaking strength Kevlar cord I have other videos talking about this but you can use this to cut zip ties cut duct tape um, just make friction saws in general and you can also use it if you're trying to evade or get away from someone if you go through I've talked about this before, but in commercial buildings, they have the hydraulic door closers. Um, next time you're at any type of gas station or anything, um, check out the door. Um, it's the mechanism that makes it so it closes kind of slow. Um, you can wrap a chunk of this around there, and it kind of makes a makeshift lock so they can't open it. This is a set of Bogota um, lock picks. These ones are unique because... The end of one of them acts as the tension wrench, you know, so that you got a single and a triple. So you got a rake and then just a single uh, feeler pick here. Um, so these, like, it doesn't take that much time to master. Like, master padlocks, no pun intended, those things are just one of the world's easiest locks to pick. Um, you buy these, and I can guarantee you within five minutes you'll be able to open a standard, I believe it's a master number nine padlock. Um, those things are freaking easy to open, but tons of people use them. Tons of people think they're strong. And with these, not just these, but I, I got these because of the compact size and then the simplicity of not having to take a tension wrench either. Okay, next I have, um, on one side I have two bobby pins uh, in two different sizes. A lot of people don't know there's different sizes, but um, there are. So, if you can see that, you probably won't be able to. But one's just a little thicker than the other. Um, and then I clipped the winged portion off. If you can see that there. Um, just because it was kind of getting in the way. But these have a multitude of uses. And then on the other side, I got these from uh, Black Scout Survival. But it's a quick stick and an easy stick. So... They're pretty much lock bypass tools, um, shims. So for combination locks, for file cabinet drawer locks, for um, a multitude of uh, locks, um, these you just bypass it. So you're not really picking it, you're just bypassing the pins and going straight for the latch. Um, so I have one each of those. 
Um, if you don't know the difference, one's just really flexible and the other one is just a little stiffer. So they're used, um, see this doesn't have that much flex to it. And then they actually came in this little vinyl carrying case here. So what I did is put one of each next to each other and then I put the bobby pins on the other side and then I just folded it over. So that's that. This last piece I modified slightly but it's this here and this comes with it and it's pretty much just a micro, they call it a micro pouch. Um, so this is something you can yank out. It comes with a piece of shot cord. I took that out and put some Kevlar cord because it's a little less bulky and you can also use this as a little friction saw. Um, so I have two um, handcuff shims. They can also be used for other types of locks. And then on this side, and then on this side, I have two small razor blades. These things are freaking sharp. And I should have them packed in something else, but I just have them packed in this little plastic bag. Um, and you got to be a little careful, but if, you know, when you get it in here, they're just sitting, not moving so that you don't have to worry about them cutting. But so a small razor blade. So pretty much this, you know, is for getting out of like hand restraints, whether that's duct tape, zip ties or handcuffs or whatever. Okay, real quick, let's talk about improvising some stuff. So as you saw, Kevlar cord is what I carried. Um, and I put it on a card because it's thin. Another option, and you've maybe seen it, is you can use a sewing bobbin and you can wind cordage on there. The problem I find with this is it it's just bulky, it's kind of thick. So I'm looking for more, you know, this is a lot slimmer, it's actually more cordage. Um, so the footprint of it seems bigger, but it's thinner. But you can also do that method. Um, one thing I did not include is fire. So, depending on the size of your kit, you could put a mini Bic, um, or I like these. Um, this is a knockoff of the original Sparklight. It's made by SOL, um, but it's orange, and it pretty much throws sparks. I, w I prefer this over those really, really small ferro serum rods because those things are freaking hard to use, and you drop it, and um, they're ho hard to hold on to and strike and do all this stuff at the same time. They're really easy to drop and they blend in with uh, sticks and dirt and whatnot on the forest floor. Don't ask me how I know. So um, for really small kits, I actually like this more than a ferro rod. Um, and then one possible thing, which I took out because it was a little, it, it was making the kit too bulky, but this is a Nightcore tube, a rechargeable flashlight. Um, but you could throw this in. It's thin. Um, it's pretty compact, and it fits perfect in one of those elastic loops. Um, and it's pretty durable, like it's not like if you're sitting on this, if it's in your back pocket, it's not like it's going to crack this. Um, it, this is actually pretty durable light. Um, you know, so light could possibly be important. Some people might want like a red LED um, instead of a bright white LED. Uh, when it comes to cutting blades, this is where you can do the most improv. improv. So, um, like I showed you, I have a hacksaw blade. You could also... Um, and this is a broken down hacksaw blade. These are metal cutting saber saw or jigsaw blades. Um, and they are rather uh, compact. They'd fit nice in that kit. Um, so that's just an option. You probably already own these instead of getting some specially made, you know, saw. So that's one option, jigsaw blade. Uh, another option, I just made this out of Kydex. Um, but this is just a section of hacksaw blade that comes out and it just increases your reach it gives you a handle um, the problem I ran into I made this one a little too tall for um, that pouch it has a three inch blade and it's also kinda thick so just keep that in mind when you're loading this pouch up is um, you can't put really really thick items or otherwise you'll be left with this circular it won't work that well so when it comes to the knives I had these razor blades here <clears throat> and I'll tell you a funny story on those in a second but um, even your standard utility knife blade, 
Um, they come pretty sharp. Maybe throw some tape over the blade just so it doesn't cut other things or yourself. Um, but these, you know, you can hold pretty easy. They're kind of double-sided. Um, and they're really common. And most people already have them on hand. I've seen, like, those ceramic little razor blades that a metal detector won't catch. And I'll be honest, I've bought one of those. And it's, you get a single razor blade for, uh... It's like 15 bucks or something like that. And you can get them really sharp. Um, and they're non-metallic and all that jazz. But they're not durable. Um, I had it in another Eni kit I um, had. And just the weight and moving around in the pocket and, you know, sitting on it and whatnot. Um, it actually broke that ceramic blade. So it, I see the purpose for some people. Like in this, instead of the razor blades I have, you could do a ceramic blade. So that's one option. Um, but, I mean, the thing is, there's already some other metal in your clothes and on your body and whatnot. So, yeah. It's funny. <laughs> what I found instead, um, actually the girlfriend, um, I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, Tweezerman LTD corn slash callus shaver. So she got this um, thing. It's like a foot scraper to get dry skin and whatnot off your feet. I don't know. It's kind of grotesque, but um, it came with this thing was like freaking three bucks or something like that. It was pretty inexpensive, and it came with a pack of all these replacement blades. Okay, so. I was putting this kit together and then I saw those, I saw the blade that goes in there and I saw that she had, it came with 20 extra blades. So that's the blade right there and it's really sharp. I'm afraid to touch the actual cutting edge. You know, you can hold it pretty easily. Oh man, that's almost scary. It's so easy to do. So that's what I'm packing. Um, it's made in uh, Germany. Um, but what I did is, for this one here, you see it's a lot smaller. And what I did is I took one of these blades here, and I carefully just broke it in half. Right? I bent it. They're designed to flex. But, you know, do this safely. I actually put it in I put it inside of that plastic bag and I broke it just like that. So you're left with these two nice compact razor blades that are really sharp and they're durable because the what they're meant to go in it's designed to flex. So you can see it's pretty flexible so if it's sitting in your pocket, wallet, whatever, um, this won't break on you. So I just thought I'd share those couple things with you. Uh, these, I mean, I pretty much got for free, but I'm sure you can buy them maybe on Amazon. I didn't check. Um, or you can just buy standard razor blades. I like these because they're so much smaller. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching. That was my review um, of the Triple Lot Design Sear Pouch. Like I said, it's a new product, so there's not many reviews on it. So, so I thought I'd come to the plate and give it a short review. Um, like I said, the only other review I saw on it is Black Scout Survival. Uh, go over to his channel, check out, he has tons of awesome Urban Survival slash e, &E uh, videos, and he does an excellent, way better than my review um, on this pouch. And then go check out, he also has tons of improvising picks, and picking different locks, and escaping zip ties, and all this cool stuff. So, um, I hope you like this review, and if you haven't already, make sure to like, share, and subscribe.